that uh, this will shut this down. As you can see, he just walks right around that screen and gets him right at the marker. So he didn't get a single yard. He might even have lost a yard there. If I want to run the ball in that direction, you can see how he just comes right in. And he just takes that, that takes that away. But this is going to be the setup for you know whatever RPO you're looking at. So you can see he's all over that. And we're going to get a pick. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Mad Money Shot. Stuff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a very specific video for you guys today on how to stop RPO plays. If you're playing Madden right now, or pretty much for the last several months, you've probably run into a lot of RPO plays because they're one of the hardest plays to stop in the game. But at the end of the day, every play can be stopped. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. I'm going to show you guys several methods, including some that I used in game plays. And I went over quite a bit in some of my defensive gameplay videos. I have links to those popping up on screen at the end of the video if you guys want to see that. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of easy ways to stop rpos if you use some of the methods i'm going to show you guys as always though if you guys want to see more videos like this please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you need more help and more money plays you can download any of my ebooks simply by clicking links in the description or the top pinned comment now, one of the first things you're going to want to do when it comes to defending RPOs is look for formations or formational tells that have RPOs in them. Formations like the I form close where it's pretty even. You have one receiver on one side, one receiver on the other. This is not an RPO formation. But if I switch over to something like the close flex or more, you know, traditionally the I form slot, anytime I see the I form slot, I know right away this is an RPO formation, an RPO heavy formation. And there's a very good chance that somebody's going to run an RPO from this against me. And that's based off the fact that there's two receivers on one side. Typically, you need more than one receiver on one side of the field for an RPO. And that's because one's going to be the bubble screen, typically going to be the slot receiver, and the other one's going to be blocking. So if you see a formation like this, that's right away a formational tell. This is If somebody's running an I-form slot against me, even before they even run it, I know that there's a very good chance that they're going to be running the stretch alert bubble or the dive alert bubble. If they're coming out in a lot of bunch formations, a lot of you know bunch TE packages, you have the RPO alert bubble once again. So it's like formations can really give away a lot now the defense that i'm going to use is going to be the big nickel over g and i'll show you guys a couple of different ways that you can stop rpo plays with just this formation but realistically you can use any defensive formation you want i use the three four odd quite a bit uh which is something that i don't use as much i really use that more around the goal line but i'll show you that setup as well but if you guys want more information on how to run the big nickel over g i made a full breakdown of this already and some game plays i have another gameplay plan coming up i'll try to leave links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video if you guys want to check that out for the big nickel over g i really just have speed everywhere i just want to make sure that i have a fast blitzing cornerback here have some safeties into my linebacker spots really not that difficult um you know you can put a cornerback here if you need to borrow a safety to have in the linebacker spots because you don't want linebackers here since they really can't jump and pass coverage and stuff like that i find safety is definitely best right now and the defense i'm going to use is going to be the same defense i use all the time in the ss blitz three so let's go ahead and let's pick that on the offensive side like i said we're using the titans offensive playbook because they have a lot of really good rpo plays just put out a full breakdown of this you guys can check that out links in the description if you guys want to see that uh the offensive play we're going to go against is going to be one of the better ones one of my personal favorites in the stretch alert bubble and that's because you have options to run the ball where this is a really good stretch run or throw it to the bubble screen uh which is also very good unless i show you guys the defense i'm going to show you so let's go and let's pick that now for this setup all i'm really going to do i'm going to do the exact same stuff that i always do the reason that i like this particular defense is because you always have this blitzing cornerback which can really help out with edge containment especially on a play like this where it's pretty much naked to that side there's really nobody out there so if i don't do anything if i just leave it like this he's probably going to auto handoff but there's a good chance that as you can see right here i'm trying to i can shoot that gap and basically you know help out and run support but typically on a play like this if i don't um if i'm not user controlling the offense if the seam flat drops back like it does a lot of times the computer would just throw it out but you can see right here i mean he's gonna you know you're gonna have that opportunity this is basically what people are gonna do they're gonna read this defender they're just gonna start this play as i'm now controlling both guys they're gonna start this play just watching that bubble screen watching that bubble screen defender and if that cornerback doesn't drop down on it right away they're typically gonna take it and hope that they can just get outside and get a catch and run and make a guy miss and that's pretty much all you really need to do now this particular play is probably more effective if it's run from a hash mark like this because it condenses the receivers to the point where the, uh, the the receiver doesn't have to run as far and this will make that play a little bit easier you see right there the defender reacted differently too if you run it from the hash mark because the defender now is reading that he has to cover the middle more watch the defender 
above the B receiver here. You're going to see on the last play when I was more towards the center of the hash, he was running out a little more. Where here, he's running in more because he has to cover that more. And you can see we don't get as good a block. But you could eat off of that all day long. If I make one guy miss, I could be going up the sideline. There's so much opportunity there. So for the defense for this particular play, it's really simple. Number one, like I said, hard flatting really doesn't do a lot. I'll show you guys what happens if I hard flat because it's going to have the same reaction. The same way that he jumped inside, he's going to do that again here. And it's just going to be too easy. You can see right there. If he gets a piece of that, now I'm going up the sideline. So this is one of the better ways, um, you know, one of the better ways to run is run from a hash mark. And you can see that hard flatting does nothing. So typically when I run this defense, I typically come out in base to hide my personnel. But if I see a formation like this, I'm going to go out of this. I'm going to change my base. I'm gonna, a lot of times I'll press first, but then I'll also base align so that this safety here uh, goes out and it's kind of man matching right in front of this defender. And this is the depth that I want him at. I don't want to change that because if I bring him too close, he's going to get be easier to block. So basically, I'm going to leave him at the depth, the preset depth from that adjustment. And then I'm just going to uh, basically put him on a... Um, a man assignment to the B route. And that's really all I got to do. I'm sacrificing a hard flat. It is what it is. I'll still hard flat the other side. If I really want that hard flat, I could always sacrifice this defensive end, put him on a hard flat to help out. It's really up to up to me. I don't have to do that, but it's something that I can do as I accidentally, uh, you know, I'm trying to put him back on a pass rush. But I just want to show you guys how at this depth, that safety is going to shut this down. And if you're in a game mode where you can put an ability on him, I typically, from this defense, I typically run hard flat or uh, hard flat KO and I think it's called zone flat KO. I'm not really sure. Zone flat KO and uh, short route KO, which is man coverage. So that way, if whether I have him in a hard flat or whether I'm manning him like I am now, he's going to stop that play. And now you can see how you're going to, you know, basically if I try to force that at this at this particular position, he's just going to match that. He's going to run right out. And he's going to shut that down. But you can see how, you know, that, that basically shut that down. So we got to set this up one more time. Go ahead and put him on a man coverage one more time. Like I said, just to show you guys that uh, this will shut this down. As you can see, he just walks right around that screen and gets him right at the marker. So he didn't get a single yard. He might even have lost a yard there. So that's one reliable way to take away a play like this. And with this blitz set up the way that it is, you're going to have a blitzing defender to help you uh, with the, um, and also hard flat once again, but you'll have a blitzing defender to help you with that, with the actual stretch run itself, which a lot of times will take that up. So if I want to run the ball in that direction, you can see how he just comes right in and he just takes that, that, takes that away. Now there are a lot of different type of RPOs, but if I go over to the concept screen and go to options, you're going to see that pretty much every RPO or stretch alert bubble, stretch alert screen, whatever, they all pretty much have the same setup where it's going to be the slot receiver running it 90% of the time. So the stretch alert bubble is that way. Uh, the RPO alert bubble, once again, you have the slot receiver running it same way. The RPO alert Omaha is the same way, where it's the slot receiver. Uh, the RPO zone alert Omaha, same way. They're all slot receivers, which is basically what I'm trying to point out. Once again, slot receiver on this play. If you go over the RPO read, same thing. It's always a slot receiver. So that's why I'm saying whenever you see these type of formations that have multiple receivers on one side, if you always man the slot receiver, you have a 90% chance of having the exact option that's going to run that and it'll shut that down 90 percent of the time now there are some other plays here you can see where it's like the uh, the power alert x looky it's going to be the same concept so if you're in a play like this all you really got to do once again there's only one receiver so it's not hard to tell just man him i typically like to move him out again just to get him closer but this is going to be the setup for you know whatever rpo you're looking at so on the other side we're just going to go ahead and run this one time you can see he's all over that and we're going to get a pick or we're going to get a knockout because like i said i typically keep uh you know short route ko on that guy so one way or the other you're setting that trap and the run defense is going to be pretty much the same because you know you're running in that direction but you're gonna to have to cover that reuser anyway so like i said that's a very easy way to stop rpos i don't use any other defense other than these two defenses and i stop rpos all day long uh, which i showed in a lot of different videos a lot of gameplays i actually have a gameplay popping up of a guy who ran pretty much rpos all game so if you guys want to see that, just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.